Good morning, hello, and welcome to the State in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred today, uh, or to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am Eo Xander, and today I am joined by Doom Guy in the live studio audience, and hopefully the Golden Loon will make an introduction as well, um, or a, uh, a, an appearance. Anyway, uh, I also wanted to, uh, to thank Sohen yesterday for showing up. I apologize for not mentioning that in the, um, the, uh, the outro to the show, but, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, uh, as Doom Guy would say, I was a goober. Anyway, today is uh, uh, Sunday, also known as Sunday, January 29th, 2023, and on schedule, we have been joined by... The Golden Loon. There he is. Booyah. Booyah. Uh, let me uh, move the mic around here a little bit so we can hopefully uh, pick him up a little bit better. Anyway, let's start us off here. In the year 474, Zeno was crowned as co-emperor of the Byzantine Empire together with his son, Leo II, age 6 or 7. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So father-son, you know, six getting crowned at the same time. Yeah. So that's, that's, a little, uh, that's a little disheartening, though, for the uh, for the father. It's like, you know, co-ruler co with your son. You know, it's just like, Six eh. or seven. Yeah. It's just like, um, okay, like, I don't know how, how he felt about that. Well, he must have been born to the throne, and that's why he had to share it, because he was too young. Hmm. Uh, oh. Or the king, his father, was not born to it. Uh, Zeno. Oh. But no, no, Zeno. No, he was, so, so his son, uh, he was crown co-emperor with his son. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway. We got a scientific discovery here in 1594. Mathematician Jean Napier dedicated his plain discovery of the whole revelation of St. John to King James VI, predicted end of the world in 1688 or 1700. Well, I don't know. How is that a discovery? It didn't happen. So, <laughs> Good point. I mean, the end of the world? Well, by uh, by 1800, definitely, because that's uh, when, the, when the U.S. was uh, starting to gain steam. So... Look at what we've done to the world. <laughs> he may not be wrong. We don't know if it's going to end or not. Well, I mean, not yeah, right. at that time. Right. So, Anyway, 1595, William Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet was thought to have been first performed, officially published in early 1597. So this is, uh, they believe this is when it, the first performance actually occurred of that, uh, okay. that play. Very, very famous play. Yeah. We got a music premiere here in 1781. Wolfgang Mozart's dramatic opera in Domino, uh, in Domino, uh, premiered at the Kuhville uh, Theater in Munich, Germany. All yeah. right. That was so, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, you were there, right? <laughs> I remember it well. 1785, in a surprising announcement, John Hancock resigned as governor of Massachusetts, allegedly due to his failing health. Oh, I thought it was handwriting. What? Designed from hand because of his handwriting, not health. Oh, oh. John Hancock. Big, yeah. You know. If if you're trying to make a joke, the prerequisite is to, for it to be funny. <laughs> I blew it. Is that what you're telling me? Very bad. <laughs> I would say you lay an egg, but you ain't no chicken. <laughs> 1802, first celebration of Burns Night in honor of poet Robert Burns' birthday by the Mother Club in Greenock. Later uh, realized his actual birthday is January 25th. So, all right. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we got the Treaty of Waitangi, 1840. First governor of New Zealand and co-author of the Treaty of Waitangi, Captain William Hobson, arrived in the Bay of Islands, New Zealand. All right, what is the, the Treaty of Waitangi? Let's take a look. Copy, open Google, paste. Let's see here. Uh, it is a document of central importance uh, to the history, to the political constitution of the state, and the national mythos of New Zealand. Wow. Oh, New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've said New Zealand yeah. a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. I missed uh, that part. <laughs> well, you know, like, there's, there's actually a thing, like, uh, New Zealand, uh, New Zealand, not on the map. There's an actual thing. 
Most world maps use the Mercator projection. The 16th century projection leaves New Zealand in the bottom right hand corner of the world and places Europe in the center. Um, but due to that, you know, because they're all the way down here, yeah. uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of maps and like, you know, not just like, you know, online or like physical, but like, you know, uh, like on globes, uh, on murals, there, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a thing that New Zealand gets overlooked. They get skipped. You telling me a globe wouldn't even have New Zealand on it? Uh, Some sometimes. Would here, they be old globes? Would that be uh, no. way back in the day or something? No, no, no. Like this is an ongoing thing going on still to, to this day. I, I figured that out after watching. I, I don't remember who it was, but there's some YouTuber who uh, looks at a lot of maps mm. and such. Uh, but it says here, why is New Zealand so often left off world maps? Huh. Like it's it's a thing. Uh, why are they? Uh, well, let's see here. It's too small? I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Australia seems to be there. Um, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, somewhere in here, it explains it. Uh, most world maps use a okay, cable, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, New Zealand spot in the hinterlands of the Pacific make it easy to misplace with a thoughtless crop. So, like, if you're, like, you know, like... I don't know, uh, but I'm gonna post this link in the underbar in the description as well. Why won't you minimize? There we go. All right. Uh, let's see here. So, so that way our viewers can at least read this and figure out the exact reason because we don't have the time to get into that important. Wow, look at that document. It's in shambles, man. Yeah. Well, let's move on up. We have a historic publication in 1845. U.S. or American writer Edgar Allan Poe's poem *The Raven* was first published in the Evening Mirror newspaper in New York City. He wrote some wicked cool things. Yeah, he did. Like, really dark. Yeah. Like, um, uh, the Telltale Heart, is that what it's called? The Something Heart. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, The Raven, you yeah. know, Nevermore and all that stuff. Vincent Price uh, acted in a lot of his different, uh, you know, plays yeah. or writing, you know. But when they did a movie or something of it, Vincent Price lived. He used to love Edgar Allan Poe's stuff. Yeah. Did you hear about yeah, how he died? It. No. In a gutter. Really? Yeah, like like he he disappeared for like a couple of days, and then somebody just found his body in a gutter. Jeez. Yeah. So, it was uh let's see here, uh died at the age of forty. It's not saying how. Um, but actually, here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, eighteen forty nine. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe was found delirious in a gutter in Baltimore, Maryland, under mysterious circumstances. It was the last time he had seen in public before his death. So. Uh, he wasn't dead. Uh, he, he correct. Was delirious. Okay. Yeah. Didn't know who he was or whatever. Yeah. So, but and then died. Yeah. Wow. So I got it a little bit wrong, but still, the gutter part I got right. Yeah. So. No. Well, you. And then he died. So yeah. apparently it was all. Yeah. Kind of jostled process. a little bit. Yeah. So. Anyway, 1850, Senator Henry Clay drafted the Compromise of 1850 to defuse tensions between slave states and free states over territories won during the Mexican-American War. That didn't last. Because the Civil War broke out in, like, 1861 or something. So, yeah. Yeah. Then, 1879, uh, Custer Battlefield National Monument established in Montana. Oh, what, uh, what, what? Custer Battlefield National Monument established in Montana. So, let's see here. Tree, I don't need this. I don't understand what... The Battle of Custer. Okay. Like, so this is the, the National Monument in, like, you know, where the Battle of Little Bighorn took place. Yeah. This is, I believe, the monument that was established. Okay. So this How is... How did it establish Montana, though? Or it's in Montana? It's in Montana. Oh, okay. It was I, established okay, in it. Montana. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm reading it wrong. It, it, therefore, it established didn't, Montana. It didn't establish what? Montana. It was yeah, established within it. the confines of the state of yeah. Montana. Okay, I got so, it. So, yeah. I bet. It's all right. You're, you're several thousand years old. You know, i got to cut you some slack. Thanks, you know? thanks a lot. 1886, Carl Benz patented the Benz Patent Motor Wagon in Karlsruhe, Germany, the world's first automobile with a burning motor. Wow. 1886. Yeah. And actually, like, there's, um, I've, like, the, there's a, a guy who does shorts, and, like, he does, like, uh, interesting things in history and such. And, like, uh, like in, in the one video I've seen of his... Uh, the bicycle was invented before the train. Okay. So it's just little yeah. weird little yeah. things like yeah. that. So. We got another historic event here in 1905. Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, unsettled by the rising violence and protests, 
enacted reforms to improve the conditions of workers. These changes will do little to stop disorder throughout Russia in ensuing months. Oh, well, you tried. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, but uh, it, it took until uh, 1917 uh, before uh, you know, he got deposed uh, by, Vlad by Vladimir Lenin. All his family killed? Yeah. Yep. Anastasia, I believe, right? Uh, I believe you're right. Yeah. I'm not sure. 1907 as well. Actually, no, the two years later, 1907. Uh, Republican Charles Curtis of Kansas became the first Native American U.S. Senator. Well, he's not fully Native American because he has a mustache, so he's, he's, he's mixed. So, but I guess there's that. You're saying because of facial hair? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, uh, which, like, you know, I, I don't know if, like, if it's a... I don't know if it's a stereotype about Native Americans not being able to grow facial hair, or if that's an actual thing. I haven't looked into it, so I don't know if I'm being racist or whatever. Well, so... You may be misinformed. I don't think it's racist at all. Well, but it's my, my understanding that you don't have facial hair, but I could be wrong. That's that's what I've been told, too. But anyway, 1920, Walt Disney started work as an artist with KC Slide Company for $40 a week. <laughs> Dang. Wow, did he turn into something special? Oh, yeah. First Winter Olympics, or during the first Winter Olympics in 1924, Swiss team of Dennis Voucher, C, uh, Alfred, uh, I think Captain, um, Alfred uh, Alfen, the, Blatten, uh, Antoine Julien and Alphonse Julien won the Military Patrol Gold Medal at the Climax Winter Olympics, or at the Chamino Winter Olympics, first version of the biathlon. Alright. And they've been using this picture as a stock photo for the first Winter Olympics. Wow. So, but uh, yeah, like the very first gold medal won in the very first uh, uh, Winter Olympics was won by a U.S. citizen. How about that? Yep. 1925, British Liberal Party chose David Lloyd George as their leader. Okay. We also have in 1936, first players elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame were Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Honest Wagner, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. First uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, of course, Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth, you know? Yeah. So, uh, Walter Johnson. Yeah. All of them. Just yeah. Here we go again. You know what this means. 1940, we have Australian Championship Men's Tennis. Australian Adrian Quist beats countryman Jack Crawford 6-3, 6-1, 6-2 for his second Australian title. Oh, maybe. Look at that. And we got a theater premiere here in 1947. Arthur Miller's play All My Sons premiered in New York City. All right. We also have some more music history here in 1954. Arnold Schoenberg's D... Uh, Profoundus premiered in Cologne, Germany. I wonder if it smelled nice. <laughs> 1957, Graham Greene's Potting Shed premiered in New York City. Okay. Potting Shed. Potting Shed. Weird name. I guess uh, it's a play about making pottery in a shed. I don't know. The Potting know. Shed. And here we go. 1963, Jim Thorpe, Red Grange, and George Halas were elected to the Football Hall of Fame. Okay. And, uh... Oh, that has to be soccer. No, I don't think so. Is it football? Football? Oh, sense. yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, it's this guy again. We've got a film premiere here in 1964. Dr. Strangelove, directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Peter Sellers and George C. Scott, premiered. George C. Scott. Yeah. Nice. Dr. Strangelove, that's another movie I gotta, I gotta see. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, let me, uh, let me add that into my movies here. Dr. Strange love. All right. We got some more music in 1966. Neil Simon's Coleman and Fields musical Sweet Charity premiered at Palace Theater in New York City for 608 performances. Mm. That's pretty good. That's real good. Yeah. A couple years. Yeah. Almost. Uh, well, yeah. That's, that is if you're doing a performance every night, which is not always necessarily, you know. Or maybe you're doing multiple no, performances do, a day. You have backups that, you know, perform when they're off. In other words, uh, I think they do a performance every night, but not not the lead actors every night. Yeah. You know, that would make sense. we got some more sports history. 1966, U.S. Female Figure Skating Championship was won by Peggy Fleming. Yeah. That was yeah. a big game. Yeah. 1967, uh, Branch Rickey and Lloyd Warner were elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Branch Rickey, yeah. yeah. We got uh, 1968, Australian Championship for Women's Tennis. U.S. Billie Jean King 
defeated home favorite Margaret Quartz 6-1, 6-2 for her 13th Grand Slam singles title. 13, wow. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah. Through it all, great, great record of, you know, of being a tennis player. She's known most for beating uh, that guy that said she, he could beat any woman. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even remember his name, but so she challenged him. I'll, I'll play it. Of course she whooped what, him. What, what does that have to say about him? You don't even remember his name. Yeah. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Oh, there's the man. 1969, Jimi Hendrix and Pete Townsend waged the Battle of Guitars. Mm. That must have been interesting to watch or oh, hear. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I wonder if they did the dueling banjos. The dueling what? Banjos. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, you know that song? No, I don't. You know, don't, 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 we got uh, 34th Golden Globes in 1977. Rocky, Peter Finch, and Faye Dunaway won. Rocky's a good movie. 1979, Chinese Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping visited Washington, D.C. Okay. Paramount Leader of China. Yeah. Okay. 1979, uh, as well, U.S. President Jimmy Carter, the peanut farmer, commuted Patty Hearst's seven-year jail sentence to two years. What did, what did, oh, she was a bank robber. Okay. Wait, a hostage and heard? a bank robber. Oh, you is that the, the Stockholm thing? Field? They kidnapped her and eventually won her over to... They were political. Is, is this where the Stockholm effect comes from? It's the Black Panthers. Okay. And uh, she ended up joining them. Of course, then she was wanted and ended yeah. up going to prison and everything else. Yeah. Really a shame. It is. Well, it looks like uh, Carter was trying to do her service here. Well, I so. think he, he released her with two years served on her seven year sentence. So she's probably uh, in for two years. Yeah, well, he reduced it from seven to two. And he then commuted. Got her out. He commuted yeah. the rest of it. Okay. So she'd probably be in for two years. In other words, commuted her out of jail. Okay. All right. She uh, should never have gone. You know what? I, I just I saw this name, and it reminds me of, uh, of the first Ace and Terror movie. I'm going to have to take this one. 1981. Uh, AL, what is AL, American League? or uh, Yeah. Uh, approved sale of White Sox to Jerry Reisendorf and Eddie Einhorn for $20 million and 80% of Mariners to George uh, Argyros for $104 meter, uh, million. So, Einhorn. So, like, Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Like, it was, that was, that was the thing uh, from Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Uh, anyway, 1983, 40th Golden Globes, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Ben Kingsley, and Meryl Streep won. Yeah, E.T., good movie. Oh, yeah. Horrible game. Almost destroyed the video game industry single-handedly. What? Really? Oh, yeah. No, like, uh, there was a whole thing. Like, there was an urban legend about it because, like, they poured millions of, of dollars into this game, and it was just a total cluster F of, of crap. It's itchy. Um, total, like, cluster F, mm -hmm. you know? And um, the urban legend was that they had so many copies that were unsold that they just buried it in a landfill in like some Arizona desert yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I heard about that. And then back in like 2008 or whatever, they're they're you know doing development and they found them. It was yeah. real. Yeah. Like. I remember so, the story. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, hearing hearing because I knew about that urban legend and then when they actually found it, it's like oh my god, it's real. Yeah. Like it was really that bad. Holy crap. Anyway, 1984, the 34th NBA All-Star Game, Denver, uh, East Beast West, 154 to 145 in overtime. Most valuable player was Isaiah Thomas, Detroit Pistons guard. First All-Star Saturday, Legends Classic West won, 64 to 63. First slam dunk winner, Larry Nance. So I guess two games. Well, the contest. Oh. Uh, you know, there's the All-Star Game and then the, the uh, slam dunk contest. Ah. Uh, you know, so many people go out there and they show their fancy... You dunking know, they, skills. Yeah, they okay. got over. Eventually, got jumping over cars to dunk. Oh and my all kinds god! Of crazy stuff. Huh. Yeah. We got a historic event here in 1984. President Reagan formally announced he will seek a second term. Mm -hmm. All right. Nancy was not happy with it. She didn't want him to run again. I I don't blame her. Well, I got shot. You know, that kind of dampened your spirit. Yeah, you know. Well. 1985, Jari Curie of Edmonton Oilers scored 100th point of season in game 39. Mm. Nice. That's a lot of points. It is. 1985 as well, Oxford University refuses to award Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher an honorary, an honorary degree. Honorary, an honorary degree. Okay, well. 
why are her eyes different? I just noticed that. Like her one eye is more open. Did she have a lazy eye or something? I don't know. Did she have a stroke? I don't know. Actually, no, this side of her head, like the, the cheek is different. Maybe she did have a kind of a partial stroke or something. I don't know. Hold on, let me let me look this up. Not that I know if she did has. Margaret Thatch not have at all a stroke. Uh, on April 8, 2013, former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Baroness, died of a stroke. Okay, she died of a stroke, but... Yeah, well, not when she... That was after her office, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's weird. She, it looks like she has a stroke. Anyway, uh, we got another historic event here in 1987. William J. Casey, term as 13th director of the CIA, ended. All right, why do we care? Uh, here we go again, Mike. 1989, Australian Open Men's Tennis. Ivan Lendl won his first Australian title, defeated fellow Czech Milosov McKee. 6-2, 6-2, 6-2. Crikey, he's consistent. <laughs> wow. He also swept him. Yeah. 1989, game-winning RBI. Runnings, battings, ins. Uh, official statistic dropped after nine years of use. New York Mets' Keith Hernandez was the all-time leader with 129. Yeah. All right. 1991, Nelson Mandela and Maga Suthu Bhuthelizi uh, met after 28 years. Uh, I don't know what that... Uh, audience, what's the significance of this? Please tell us in the underbar, or not in the, uh, in the comments section. Moving on up to 1993, U.S. Postal Service issued a stamp commemorating chemist Percy LeVon Julian. All right. I don't know who he is. He's a chemist, uh, we know that. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at him. Um, say blah, blah, blah. He was the first black U.S. citizen chemist to be inducted into the National Academy of Sciences. Okay. Um, but what did he do anything? Like, he had some accomplishments somewhere along the way. Um, 1936, he went to work as a research director for Glidden, where he produced many successful patents and products, including a fire retardant foam for gasoline fires. Ooh. Well, uh, which saved many lives during the Second World War. Oh, okay. That's pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, he also uh, improved the process to make cortisone so it could be used more widely uh, for rheumatoid arthritis. That's huge, too. Yeah, so thank you. Deserves, deserves that commemorative stamp. Good good guy. Good job. 1995, Australian Open Men's Tennis. Andre Agassi won his first four Australian titles, defeated fellow U.S. citizen Pete Stampras, or Stampras, 4-6, 6-1, 7-6, to 6-4. Oh, that was all, that number was jumbled all over the place there. We got the Super Bowl uh, 29, 1995, Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami, Florida. San Francisco 49ers defeated San Diego Chargers 49-26. Most valuable player, Steve Young, San Francisco quarterback. That makes me wonder, you have San Francisco and San Diego. What are they doing all the way out in Florida? <laughs> like, yeah. That's a little ridiculous. 1996, 23rd American Music Awards, Garth Brooks won. All right. 1996 as well. France will no longer test nuclear weapons, as President Wauquiz Chirac said, following inter international outcry over tests in the Pacific. Okay. Well, yeah. There's only so much you can learn from blowing up nuclear weapons. You know? Well, like, how, how much, how much uh, atoms can we destroy today? You know? Well, 1996, oh, last boy. day of test cricket for Australian cricketer David Boone. Oh, cricket. Yep. 2000, Australian Open Women's Tennis. Uh, U.S. Lindsay Davenport claimed a third and final career Grand Slam title, defeated Martina Hingis 6-1, 7-5. And in 2000 as well, Carl Malone of the Utah Jazz became the third player in NBA history to score 30,000 career points, finished with 35 in a 96-94 loss to Minnesota, behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at 38,387, and Will Chamberlain at 31,419. All right. I think uh, Kareem still stands, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. So most uh, most NBA career goals, right? Yeah. Points. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thirty-eight thousand three hundred eighty-seven. Good luck beating that. Got some more sports history in two thousand two. The San Diego Char Chargers hire Marty uh, Schottenheimer as their thirteenth head coach. Okay. 2002 as well, U.S. President George W. Bush, in his State of the Union address, 
that described regimes that sponsored terror and axis of evil, which included Iraq, Iran, and North Korea. I remember that speech. Do you? Yeah. Good. And it's an axis of evil, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah. because, I mean, like, as a historian, you hear the word axis. What's yeah. the first thing you think yeah. of? World War II. Yeah. You know, Germany, Italy, and Japan. Uh, here we go again, May 2005, Australian Open Women's Tennis, and an All-American final, Serena Williams won her second Australian title, defeated Lindsay Davenport 2-6, 6-3, 6-9. Six, 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 Dang. And 2006, Australian Open Men's Tennis, Roger Federer defeated Marcos Baghitis 5-7, 7-5, 6-0, 6-2, title. All right. Believe me, mate, I'm getting tired of saying that talking in the sack says as much as you are hearing it. 2006, U.S. Postal Service released a 39-cent stamp featuring Hattie McDaniel in the dress she wore in 1940 when she became the first black U.S. citizen and actress to accept an Academy Award. And yeah, she played, uh, uh, she played, uh, uh, what's-her-face in, um... Gone with the Wind? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the... The house, uh, house servant or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 2007, Ken Dryden's number 29 jersey was retired by the Montreal Canadiens. You know, it makes me wonder, like, how long can you retire a jersey? Because after so long, you're going to run out of double digit numbers. You know? Well, it depends on how many you retire. Well, like, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, on the Lakers yeah. was like. 46, right, or something? I don't I don't remember the number. I know he changed his number at one point. He did. Um, but, like, would there ever be, like, 100 years from now, would there ever be, like, another person to share that same number? Or, you know, because Not with it was... the Lakers. If the Lakers retire, it's done. But they only retire very few. Okay. I need to, I need to learn to more about that. Yeah, you have to do something except that. The Lakers may have retired maybe 10, maybe. Okay. The history of the... Now, did they retire? Did they retire? Uh, they, they, they must have retired Kobe's jersey. But which one did they retire? Um, I think a second one. I'm not okay. sure. That would make sense. First, I, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Go look it up. All right. Uh, what number did uh, what? the Lakers uh, retire from? Where did the Lakers? Well, here we go for Kobe. Uh, number 8 and 24 in 17. Oh, they did both of them. That's what I was thinking, because he did both of them. You know, yeah. So, so they retired both. Okay. All right. That really surprised. That is very rare. Yeah. So, Kobe Bryant. You know, he's, he's just yeah. Anyway, 2011 Australian Open Women's Tennis Kim Kalisters won her fourth and final Grand Slam title. Defeated Li Na of China, three to six, six to three, six to three. Like got a little Trump in there. You know, <laughs> China. I just want to know. Uh, when we get to Wimbledon in the summer, what kind of accent? Oh, are you going to use the same Aussie uh, accent for the uh, for the English? Not for the English. <laughs> well, that's Wimbledon. Well, no, that's I'll, England. Yeah, I'll, you'll probably do it prim and proper, mate. <laughs> you know? uh, biscuits and gravy. I can hardly wait. 2012, 100th Australian Open Men's Tennis, and Novak Djokovic defeated Rafael Nadal, 5-7, 6-4, 6-2, 6-7, 7-5, Longest Grand Slam singles title final, or singles final, in duration in the open era, five hours and 53 minutes Oof. on court. Oof. Hail. Endurance, man. You know, this guy had stores all of his energy in his neck. <laughs> you, see, you see that guy's neck? The man is a bloody giraffe. Look at that. Looks, it looks like, you know, those people, like, you know, in, in Africa, they wear all the gold chains around, they have a long neck, you know, <laughs> the gold hoops. Yeah. Anyway, 2012, U.S. snowboarder Sean White achieved the first ever Super Pike perfect score of 100 in Winter X Games history. All right. That's cool. Yeah. 2014, Cristiano Ronaldo became the first non-Spanish player to captain Real Madrid, making his 500th appearance for the club. Dang. That's a bunch. Yeah. 2015, Malaysia officially declared the disappearance of missing flight MH370 an accident. Yeah, we shall see. Yeah. So, 
Got some more sports history here. 2018, David Beckham launched a major league soccer team in Florida, Inter Miami CF. So I guess he created a team. Sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Got a film premiere here in 2018. Marvel film Black Panther, directed by Ryan Coogler and or, or Coogler, um, and starring Chadwick Boseman, premiered in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, 2019, in the aftermath to a wild ending to UFC 229, Khabib uh, Nuragomedov, 500,000 in nine months, and Conor McGregor, 50,000 in six months, were issued fines and suspensions, bans retroactive to October 6, 2018. I remember Conor McGregor got into some kind of hot water or something. I don't follow UFC, though. But, yeah. Uh, I guess he assaulted somebody to get him his belt. Uh... Anyway, uh, before we move on to the Burst of Death's audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wished we had elaborated more about? Anything you would have liked to add had you been here? Start a dialogue in the comments section. Uh, are we losing the, the loon? No, I'll stay with you. Thank you. All right. Let's move on up here to Burst, starting us off in 1584. We have Frederick Henry, Prince of Orange and Stad uh, Holder of Holland. I guess statistics? I'm not sure. Uh, Zealand, Utrecht, Gilders and Overgissel from 1625 to 47. Born in Delft, Dutch Republic. Names are difficult. That's tough to get through. Yeah. We got Thomas Paine, 1737, an English-American English writer and political essayist. Age of Reason and Common Sense. Born in Thetford, England, and died in 809. Hey, so, was a pain. Yeah, well, no, like, uh, Common Sense, um, actually... Uh, this guy was integral towards the uh, the American Revolution. Uh, this uh, this common sense that he wrote, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it it basically argued that it was common sense to break off from the British. You I know, know he, he had something to do with it. I don't know what it was. I'll go along with that. Yeah. But but he was like he's the start of the fire. Yeah. You know, he, like he the public the seed. Yeah. Well, because like you know. You can feel however the other way you want, but you don't know how many other people feel the way you do yeah. until you start seeing what you feel in the newspaper. It's like, hey, this is so this is common enough to be on the newspaper. We gotta start talking to each other and start, you know, making things different. Okay, so that makes sense. Yep, that's common sense. Yeah. We also have William McKinley, 1843, 25th president. U.S. President, Republican from 1897 through 1901, born in Niles, Ohio. Died in 1901. So I guess he died in office? or No. Uh, yeah, yeah, assassination. Oh, yeah, excuse he, me. That's right. Um, so he's one of our assassinated presidents. Uh, yes, he I was. That. Yeah, well, like, he, he died in 1901, and he, his presidency ended in 1901. Okay, yeah. Uh, that, that, so yeah. I was just like, hey, did he, yeah, assassination. So, yeah. Six months into his term, on September 6, 1901, he was shot by Leon Kozolgoz, a Polish-American anarchist. He died eight days later and was succeeded yeah. by Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, it was uh, a slow death. Yeah, that's that's the worst kind. Uh, then we also have, uh, you know what, I want to see this. I see the inventor. 1850, we have Lawrence Hergrave, English-born aviation pioneer and inventor of the box kite. Born uh -huh. in London, England. Uh, then died in 1915. The box kite is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, like, you know, this is what we uh, we, we skip over for the most part. It, it, it breaks my heart. Yeah, I love you little know? stuff like that. Yeah. Because, you know, when you've been down to the beach or something and it's like dying weather, you'll see that damn box kite up there by someone. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have Anton Chekhov in 1860, a Russian author and playwright, Cherry Orchard and Uncle Vanya, born in Tagenrog, uh, Russia. T Tagenrog. Sorry, Russia. Died in 1904. But I saw something else up here really quick. 1850, Ebenezer Howard, English pioneer of Garden Cities, born in London, England, and died in 1928. What's a Garden City? What is Garden Cities? Garden City movement. Uh, it was a 20th century urban, uh, uh, yeah, urban planning movement promoting satellite communities surrounding the central city and separated it with green belts. These garden cities would contain proportionate areas of residences, industry, and agriculture. Mm, okay. huh. That's that's really cool, yeah. you know. And once again, you know that stuff that you know. Unfortunately, we we skip over because uh, we don't do any research and such beforehand, which is a tragedy. But you know, we're working on making things better. 
1874, we have John D. Rockefeller Jr. was a U.S. financier and, uh, yeah, financier and philanthropist, born in Cleveland, Ohio, died in 1960. Yeah, all right. That was the grandson, I believe. Uh, John D. Rock. No, the son. He is the son. Junior is only the son. You can't uh, you can't juniorize somebody from the grandfather. I think. Right? No, I think it's if you know if you're the second rock, John D. Rockefeller, then he's junior. No You'd be the second. Junior, oh, okay. junior, junior is only when son. you're the okay. son. Okay. If I'm, if it makes sense to so me, he would be the second. John D. Rockefeller, he's the grandson. He'd be the second. Yes. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. If you're right. I think so. Uh, hold on a second. What constitutes junior? A man with the same name as his father uses junior after his name as long as his father is alive. His father may use the suffix senior for senior. Uh, the son may either drop the suffix after his father's death, or if he prefers, retain it so that he won't, he won't be confused with his late father. Ah, so there we go. Right. Well, you know, it makes sense and, to me. And uh, not only the son, but still alive. Yeah. Okay, which is you know, pretty common. Yeah. You your son's, you're going to be alive when your son is alive. Yeah. We got R. Norris Williams, 1891, a, a U.S. tennis player, U.S. National Championship, 1914 and 16. Survived the sinking of the RMS Titanic. Whoa. Wow. Born in Geneva, Switzerland, and died in 1968. Whoa. What, did he duck right in there with the women? Uh, well, he must have been a... <laughs> no, like, that is weird, because he was born in 1891, and the Titanic was 1912. Yeah. So he's, uh, what's 12 plus 9? Uh, 21. 21, yeah. So he was an adult man. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Might have put on a, like a, a mop or something to fake hair, you know. Oh, yeah. Some men got on. It, I don't know. You know. As they went. Anyway, who else was born on this day? We are just scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. Donna Capone, 1945. She's 78 today. A U.S. golfer, PGA Championship 1979 and 81. U.S. Open 1969 70. 24 time LPGA Tour wins. Was born in Detroit, Michigan. Not familiar with her. Yeah, hey, I, look at Tom it. Selleck. 1945 as well, a U.S. actor, Lance Rockfield, uh, Lance for the Rockford Files, and Magnum P.I., born in Detroit, Michigan. Happy birthday. We also have uh, Oprah Winfrey. Ah. 1954, a U.S. talk show host and actress, The Oprah Winfrey Show, Color Purple. That's born a great in, movie. Yeah, it's, that's on uh, my movies channel I gotta watch. Uh, born in Cusco, Mississippi. That's a weird name. She's 69 today, so happy birthday. Greg Luganus, I know about this name. Oh, yeah. 1960, diver. a U.S. diver, Olympic gold 10-meter and 3-meter springboard, 1984 and 88. Born in San Diego, California. Yay. Who else do we have here? Uh, we got, we're going to have anybody? No, we're not. So let's move on into deaths. Starting us off in 661, we have the death of Ali. Uh, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Uh, Ali ibn Abu Talib, the fourth caliph of the Rashidun Caliphate, 656 through 561, and the first Shia Imam, 632 through 661, assassinated by Ibn Muljam, a Qajarjate, at around the age of 59. These names. So. We also have George III, 1820, was the King of Great Britain and Ireland, and the King slash Elector of Hanover from 1760 through 1820, died after years of mental illness at 81. Jeez. That's, uh, that's not good. Uh, Douglas Haig, 1928, a British Field Marshal, Battle of Sudan in World, during World War I, nicknamed Butcher Haig due to mass casualties under his command during the Battle of the Somme, died from a heart attack at the age of 66. So, all right. We also have H.L. Mencken, 1956, a U.S. newspaperman and critic, Prejudices, Smart Set, died at 75. Robert Frost, 1963, a U.S. poet, New Hampshire, and four Pulitzers, died at the age of 88. And Jimmy Durant, uh, 1980, a U.S. actor, comedian, and singer known as the Schnozola, the Durant and Moore Show, Jimmy Durant Show, died of pneumonia at the age of 86. And we also have Tom Brookshire, 2010, U.S. football player and sportscaster, died of cancer at 78. Dang, really sad. 
And uh, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. Please go to the Omni Coalition's YouTube, our Rumble, our BitChute. We will be eventually moving over uh, to uh, the Omni Coalition's YouTube to live stream. So we, we still will be posting on, on AO Xander channel, but it's going to be posting, no longer live stream. Anyway, for your dose of Pass Events Daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is... Uh, 11 Mountain, 12 Central, 1 p.m. Eastern, and uh, the videos are usually about an hour or so after, actually an hour and a half to two hours after uh, those live streaming times. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am Ao Xander. Golden Loon. And in the live studio audience, we of course have uh, Doom Guy. Uh, and you, of course, are you. And until you uh, catch us tomorrow, uh, don't forget to look right and left at every inter uh, intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. And we also, I've almost forgot, we have uh, the Kick Peanut coming up at 2 p.m. Pacific Time live stream. Anyway, uh, yeah, toodles. <laughs>